Okay, let us start the session today. So in the last class, we have started the embedded system components model, right? So what do you mean by embedded system? And what are the basic components of the, the embedded system? So, so what is an embedded system? It's an electronic or electromechanical system designed to designed to perform a specific function and is the combination of both hardware and the the form is so it is both the combination of hardware as well as the the combination of the software we also call it as a form right and every embedded system is unique and the hardware as well as the form is highly specialized to the application domain right both hardware as well as the form made has been uh, customized or it is uh, it is a bit for a particular application domain so that is what the things here and we have last, last seen the what is the difference between a general purpose computing system as well as the difference between uh, what you call it as the embedded system as well we have seen it right and what is the history of the computer embedded system and what are the basic classification of the embedded system we have seen it the first one is based on the generation how the embedded system has been now uh, classified based on the complexity and the performance of the performance requirement how the embedded system has been classified and based on deterministic behavior and based on the triggering methods they are using it how the embedded system has been classified it so so based on the the what you call it as based on the, the the type of the generation we have something called as uh, the embedded system has been classified into three classes sorry five classes first generation uh, embedded system second generation third generation fourth generation as well as the next generation embedded so in the first generation what we have done we had uh, only 8 bit processor right and 8 bit microcontrollers as well and the hardware uh, circuits were very simple and the assembly code was uh, the instructions were very, very simple as well but in the second uh, generation so we have 16 bit microprocessor as well as 8 bit or 16 bit microcontrollers and the int instruction sets were hello sir ah sir here it is ah sir oh sir now oh, sir
okay in the last class we have uh, also discussing about the second generation uh, uh, embedded system which consists of 16 bit microprocessor as well as the uh, 8 bit or 16 bit microcontrollers and uh, instructions that were much more complex than the first generation as well as powerful than the first generation computers as well or the first generation embedded system as well some of the second generation embedded system contained embedded operating system for their operations right so they also contain some of the uh, embedded operating system for their operations right there are some something called as a third generation uh, embedded system which are built around 32 bit microprocessor as well as the 16 bit microcontrollers we have 16 bit microprocessor for the 16 sorry 32 bit microprocessor and 16 bit microcontrollers sorry, no, right and uh, application and uh, domain specific my processors or controllers like digital signal processor and application specific integrated circuits came into pictures we have like, uh, these are the advancement in the third generation and the instruction set of the processor became more complex it has become more complex as well as it is powerful and the concept of instruction pipeline is also evolved in the third generation that's what and fourth generation the advent of uh, system and chips right reconfigurable processors and uh, multi-core processors are bringing high performance tight integration and the miniaturization into the embedded device markets we have uh, in the fourth generation we have all these advancements right and uh, they make use of high performance real-time embedded operating system for their functioning right they are making use of the uh, high performance uh, real-time embedded operating system for their uh, functioning or the uh, working right and the next generation we are looking for the processors and embedded market is highly dynamic and demanding right and the next generation now uh, embedded systems are expected to expected to meet uh, growing demands in the, the market and the next one now uh, based on the complexity and the performance of the embedded system we have something called as the first um, uh, classification is a small scale embedded system second scale embedded system and third one is a large scale embedded systems right so small scale embedded systems uh, the simple in application needs and the uh, performance requirements uh, are not uh, critical that is uh, uh, these kind of uh, embedded system require only simple application needs right so they wanted to install very simple applications and the performance uh, uh, performance uh, uh, requirements are also small right uh, they are not critical in nature and uh, like an electronic type right you have electronic type where, where they don't need uh, much applications as well as and uh, they are they do they are not running any uh, performance right the, the, or the time critical applications and usually built around low performance and low cost 8 bit or 16 bit microprocessor or uh, microcontrollers they are these kind of uh, embedded systems are built around uh, small uh, sorry, low cost 8 bit or 16 bit microprocessor or the microcontrollers may or may not contain an operating system for its functioning they contain only a limited set of instructions and uh, these may not contain the operating system in it so that is called as the small scale embedded system which doesn't require much uh, application needs as well as the, the performance uh, requirements is also limited one medium scale uh, embedded systems slightly complex in hardware and firmware requirements they are slightly complex compared to the simple uh, uh, what you call it, small scale embedded systems and usually built around medium performance low cost 16 bit or uh, 32 bit microprocessor or microcontrollers or digital signal processor they are built around uh, uh, low cost 16 bit or 32 bit microprocessor on the microcontrollers and usually contain an embedded operating system for functioning they basically contain an embedded system for their uh, functioning or for their working all right that is that is called as a medium scale embedded systems they are slightly complex compared to the small scale embedded systems and the large scale embedded systems they are highly complex in hardware and firmware requirements they require a very uh, sophisticated hardware as well as uh, uh, the uh, the firmware as well as a firmware or the hardware software must be very sophisticated one 
they are employed in mission critical applications demanding high performance they are they have been uh, implemented they have been uh, deployed in hype or the time critical applications usually built around uh, high performance 32 bit or 64 bit write errors processors or the controllers and the reconfigurable uh, system on chip or multi processor core processors uh, and programmable logic devices they are built around all these things uh, 32 bit or 64 bit or uh, processor they have built in around and may contain <coughs> multiple processors or the controllers and the co-units are hardware accelerators for, for uploading offloading the processing requirements from the main processor of the system right they are having controllers or the multiple processors or the co-units are the hardware accelerator for uploading offloading the processing requirements from the main process that is they are uh, they are uh, putting uh, more and more number of uh, processor so that uh, they are uh, they are not overloading the main processor in that case decoding or encoding of media cryptography uh, function implementation and uh, uh, implementation extra etc are examples of processing requirements which can be implemented using a pro coprocessor or a hardware accelerator so these are the uh, requirements of the the uh, large scale embedded system where you are you you you're supposed to perform in uh, decoding of the media as well as cryptographic function implementation that is encryption and decryption has been uh, it is the requirement of the uh, what you call it as embedded system right for that one what you are doing is that we are including a coprocessor or the hardware accelerator so that uh, uh, the main processor is not being burdened with the and the crypto cryptographic function or with the decoding or encoding of the media usually contain high performance real time operating system for task scheduling prioritization and the the management they are using high performance uh, uh, rtos that is a real time operating system for task scheduling prioritization and the the management as well right all you know the large scale embedded system requires uh, sophisticated hardware as well as the the firmware right and uh, they are built around uh, 32 bit or 64 bit uh, risk processor and also they are having uh, uh, co processors apart from your main processor uh, as well as the hardware accelerator so to upload offload or to relieve the main processor from the burden of the some functions the for to perform uh, the the job of the co processor is to encode or decode the medias as well as uh, to perform some cryptographic functions so these cryptographic functions are performed by the coprocessor so that uh, main processor is relieved from the work of the cryptographic functions and usually the operating system you are using is the real time operating system and classification based on the deterministic behavior right so be applicable for real time systems the embedded systems are uh, used in the like which are used in the real time system the application or task execution behavior can be either deterministic or non deterministic right you can just uh, you can have uh, the application task execution behavior can either be deterministic or non deterministic based on the execution behavior real time embedded systems are classified into hard real time as well as the soft real time systems right based on the execution behavior it is either it may be a deterministic uh, uh, embedded system or non deterministic embedded system and based on the the triggering so we have classified it as event triggered at the the time the embedded system embedded systems which are reactive in nature like process control system in the industrial control application can be classified based on the the trigger so based on the trigger uh, we are just doing the things what is that reactive system uh, can be either uh, event triggered or the time trigger event triggered is in the sense that whenever a particular event uh, occurs your embedded system will wake up and uh, it will start doing some work that is called as a event triggered time triggered in the sense that we are setting the time off stating that your uh, embedded system should wake up at this time and it has to do this work so that is called as the, the time trigger it is like an alarm right we are putting some something called as alarm right so whenever uh, uh, it, it it approaches the time so your alarm start ringing right so that same thing here as well the time triggered in the sense that you are just uh, 
setting the time in such a way that it has to your embedded system should wake up at that particular time and it has to do the assigned work whereas the event triggered in the sense that it will usually sleep for almost time and whenever an event occurs particular event occurs it will wake up and uh, it will do all the assigned work and it will again go into a sleep mode that is called as a event trigger so these are the classification based on the uh, the history uh, the based on the, what you call it as the generation based on the complexity and the performance and based on the the behavior deterministic behavior we are classifying it into hard real time as, uh, as well as the soft real time and based on the triggering we are classifying it into event triggered or the time triggered embedded systems and what are the major application areas of the embedded systems it is basically used in consumer electronics like the camcorders uh, uh, cameras and etc so it is basically used in uh, consumer electronics like uh, camcorders everything is called as the uh, embedded system because uh, everything like your uh, camcorders are fitted with a processor so you can perform all the activities uh, that that a normal uh, system can do it and the cameras are also called as the embedded system and household appliances like uh, television dvd players washing machines refrigerator microwave oven they all are uh, an examples of the or uh, they are uh, the applications of the embedded system home automation and the security system air conditioners sprinklers intruder detection ala, uh, alarms and the closed circuit uh, television cameras and fire alarms they all caught as the home automation like of the applications major application of the embedded system automotive industry anti clock lock breaking system that is a ab system and engine control ignition system and automatic uh, automatic navigation system and all the things it is also being used in the the automotive industry for like uh, anti lock breaking system and all things and telecom right this is one of the best example for embedded system cellular telephones or telephone switches handset uh, uh, multimedia applications and etc right uh, cellular telephones right you are have you are using the smartphones right so this is one classical example of the uh, application of uh, embedded system right these are the areas where the embedded system is being used is so the consumer electronics household applications home automation and the security system automotive industry as well as the, the telecom industry we are using the the embedded systems and the other areas of uh, applications are computer peripherals like the printers scanners and uh, fax machines also uh, are making use of the embedded system computer networking system network routers switches and hubs and firewalls uh, etc and healthcare system different kinds of uh, scanners is easy ecg machines etc uh, they are making use of the embedded system measurements and uh, instrumentations digital multimeters digital CROs, logic analyzers, PLC systems, and extra, right? So they are also an example of the embedded system. And banking and retail, automated teller machines, and the currency counters, point of sage, etc. right? We are using ATMs, right? Automated teller machines. It is one best example of the uh, embedded system as well. Card readers, barcode, uh, smart card readers, handle devices, etc. are the applications major applications of the embedded system <clears throat> what are the basic uh, the purpose of the embedded system each embedded system is designed to serve the purpose of anyone or a combination of the following tasks right task where they are basically meant for some applications or for some particular purpose and these are the areas or the purpose of the embedded system first one is the data collection <sighs> embedded systems are meant for data collection uh, storage or they are also meant for uh, representations right and uh, they also used for data communication that is to carry the data from one one area to another area and the data processing that is also called as a signal processing monitoring control and uh, it's also used in a uh, application specific user interface these are the the basic purpose of the uh, embedded systems like the data collection and storage and the representation of the data and the data communication data processing monitoring control application specific 
user interface as well. They also, uh, it is, so let us look at each one of them. That is a data collection, storage, and the representation. Embedded system designed for the purpose of data collection performs acquisition of data from the external world. It is basically used to capture the data from the external world. Data collection is usually done for storing, analysis, manipulation, and the, the transmission, right? It's this data collection is uh, done for storing, right? Once the storage has been done, you can analyze it, you can manipulate it, or you can transmit it, or you can send it to some other media, right? The term data refers to all kinds of information, whether it may be a text, voice, image, video, or the electrical signal, or uh, uh, any other measurable quantities. They are, they are, they all call as the, the data. Data can be either analog or digital, right? Either uh, data can be either analog uh, data or it can be a digital data as well. The collected data may be stored or transmitted, or it may be processed, or it may be deleted instantly after giving a mini representation. Data is being uh, stored, or it is basic, uh, before storing it, you are collecting it. Once it is collected, you are going to store it, or you are going to transmit it, or it may be processed, or it may be deleted instantly after giving a meaningful representation. Best example is the digital camera. What you're doing is that you are capturing an image, right so capturing an image is nothing but the collecting right once the data has been collected you're storing it your image will be get stored into the things and if you transmit it to another other uh, media like you if you you enable the bluetooth or the uh, share it then you if you transfer it to some other media we call it as a transmission or if you delete it if you assume that the picture quality is not good you will delete it right so that you can do it and the digital camera is a typical example of an embedded system with the data collection, storage, and the representation. Images are captured, and the captured image may be stored within the memory of the camera, right? You are storing, you are capturing the image, and uh, the captured image will be stored in the memory, right? The captured image can also be represent, presented to the user through a graphics LCD image. The same thing can be seen on the graphics LCD. LCD. And the data communication embedded data communication systems are deployed in applications ranging from complex satellite communication system to simple home networking system right your data communication systems are deployed in applications ranging from complex satellite communication system to simple home networking systems as well the transmission is achieved either by a wired line medium or by a wireless medium right you are just transmitting the data from one uh, one uh, data to another data either using the wireless medium or the wired medium right and uh, or the wireline medium the data collecting embedded terminal itself can incorporate data communication units like wireless modules right the data collecting right whatever the data collection unit you have it that is basically used to uh, hold the, or uh, it is having the wireless modules like the bluetooth b wi-fi or edge gps etc right so look at one example of the data communication. The wireless network router for data communication, network hubs, router switches, etc. are typical examples of dedicated data transmission embedded systems. They act as mediators in data communication and provide various features like data security, monitoring, etc. They are basically act as a mediator for data communication and provide various features like the data security, monitoring, as well as and anything else, right? Data processing, right? The data one after it may be voice data, image data, or the video or the electrical signal and the quantities collected by embedded system may be used for various kinds of data processing. It can be used for various kinds of data processing. The embedded system with the signal processing functionalities are employed in applications demanding signal processing like speech coding, synthesis, or to audio video codec and uh, transmission applications etc right so these embedded systems are basically uh, used in signal pro processing functionalities uh, which are implied uh, to uh, for processing a speech uh, coding synthesis audio video codec and uh, transmission application as well so here is one example of the application of the uh, the embedded system right the digital hearing aid is a typical example of an embedded system so employed uh, employing data processing it is it collects the data uh, from the external world and the same thing will be communicated to the 
pleasure. Crystal hearing aid improves the hearing capacity of hearing impaired persons. What it will do is that it will collect the data from the external world and the same thing will be communicated to the uh, impaired persons, right? So he, it will improve the hearing capabilities of the end user. So that is what you call it as the data processing. Monitoring in the sense, almost embedded products coming out of the medical domain are used for medical sorry, monitoring, right? So this is one example of uh, uh, monitoring, right? Patient monitoring system for monitoring the heart rates, right? So, okay, a very good example is the electrocardiogram, that is a UCG machine for monitoring the heartbeat of a patient, right? So, embedded, this is one example of the embedded system where it, they are continuously monitoring the, the heartbeats. The machine is intended to do the monitoring of the heartbeats, right? Heartbeats will be continually, uh, continuously monitored using the using a machine, right? It cannot impose control of the heartbeat, right? It will not hurt the uh, the the hard bits level or the hard bits but instead what it will do is that it will have uh, it will it will monitor how many hard bits they ha have per minute the sensors used in our ecg are, are the different electrodes connected to the uh, uh, the patient's body they are connected to the patient body which will monitor the uh, the now hard bits of a person some other examples of embedded system with monitoring functions are Measuring instruments like digital CRO, digital multimeters, logical, logic analyzers, etc., used in control and instrumentation applications. It is being used in a, in other applications areas like a digital CRO, digital multimeters, logic analyzer, etc. So one major application of uh, the purpose of the, the embedded system is uh, it is almost uh, used for monitoring. That is basically used in the medical domain where you are they are using uh, to monitor the the condition of a patient so it is used for uh, controlling the major purpose of the embedded system is for controlling embedded systems with control capability functionalities impose control over some variables according to the changes in the input variables based on the input variables it is going to change the the variables a system with control uh, functionality contains both sensors and the actuators so okay it basically contains sensors as well as the actuators so, okay so based on the the conditions it is going to adjust some variables right sensors are connected to the input code for capturing the changes in environmental variable or measuring variables right it is the sensors are basically connected to the system or it is connected to the device so which will monitor the uh, changing environments the actuators connected to the output port are controlled according to the, the changes in input variable to input and import impact on the controlling variable to bring the control variable to the specified range, right? So actuators connected to the input output port are controlled according to the changes in the input variable uh, to put an impact on the controlling variable to bring the control variable to the specified range. So all in all, so what you do is that actuators are basically captures the input variables based on these input variables it is going to adjust the internal variables so that it is it is maintaining the specified range right so one example of the 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 control is that air conditioner system we used to control the room temperature to specified limit is a typical example for very system for control purpose an air conditioner contains a room temperature sensing element, which may be a thermost, uh, thermistor or and a handled uh, unit for setting up the desired temperature. It is basically used to maintain a room temperature. If the room temperature goes beyond a specific range, it again intimates the user so that uh, it, uh, it captures the room temperature and it adjusts the room temperature accordingly. So that is that's what's the basic purpose of the embedded system. And uh, the other uh, purpose of the, the embedded system is the application specific user interface. Right? These are the embedded systems with application specific user interfaces like buttons, switches, keyboards, keypad, lights, bells, display units, etc. Right? It's basically uh, uh, 
we is used in the application specific user interfaces like the buttons, switches, keywords, lights, bells, and uh, display units, etc. Mobile phone is an example for this one, right? We are using uh, mobile phone. So this is an example of the, uh, the application specific user interface. In mobile phone, <coughs> the user uh, interface is provided to keyboard, graphic LCD model, uh, system speaker, vibration alert, and etc. Right? And speaker uh, user interface is provided through a keyboard, graphic LCD model, system speaker, vibration alert, etc. So that is how you can use embedded system for uh, building application specific user interface. A mobile phone is an example for embedded system with an application specific user interface. So you are designing um, buttons, switches, keypads, and uh, lights, bells, and uh, display units for the same purpose. And the next one, it's uh, how the typical uh, embedded system looks like. How it actually looks like. Look at this one. We have something called as a, a system code, which is nothing. Let us look at the the typical uh, embedded system, how an embedded system looks like, right? It has uh, all these components with it, right? The first one is a system core, which is nothing but the processor what you have it, and memory is also memory is there, external memory, right? Which is uh, connected to the processor. Right. We have a processor, right? System core, what you call it as, and so which is connected to a memory, right? And uh, the communication interfaces like your uh, USB or uh, the the connectors, right? And uh, output ports actuators. We have connected to an output ports, and also other supporting in, uh, supporting uh, integrated circuits and the subsystem what you have it, and also. The input ports uh, are also called as the, the sensors, and uh, these output ports are called as the actuators, whereas the input ports are called as the sensors. Right? When you connect it through, uh, when these the system core is connected to all these items, sensors will give the inputs from the external ports into the system core, whereas uh, this is going to this is going to uh, give the, uh, which is going to adjust the, the output parameters in such a way that uh, uh, it is going to maintain a uh, maintain a correct uh, range values. Whereas we have the communication interfaces, which are nothing but your uh, USBs and all the connectors. And the systems of uh, code is also connected to a memory segment or the memory unit, and uh, this in turn is connected to an embedded format. Right, we have uh, connected to an embedded format as well, and this is maybe a microprocessor or a controller of FGA and other things, and other supporting integrated system as well. We are connected with a other system, other supporting integrated circuits of the embedded systems. So in the core, what are the core of the embedded system? We look at it. The embedded system or domain and application specific are built around a central core, which is built a basic. So basically, uh, it has uh, the core application specific and built around a central core. The core of the embedded system falls into any of the following categories and uh, it may be a general purpose and uh, domain, uh, domain, uh, domain specific processor right the microprocessor microcontrollers as well as the digital signal processors and also they can be uh, application specific integrated circuits are also called as the asic and they can be programmable logic devices uh, which is called as the plds and commercial the commercial official uh, 
ಡಿಪೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ಶನ್ Uh, application uh, may be a microprocessor or a microcontroller or a digital signal processor depending upon the uh, depending on the domain and the application most of the embedded systems in the industrial control and monitoring application make use of the commonly available microprocessor or microcontrollers they are making use of uh, the commonly available microprocessor or microcontrollers domain or uh, domains which require signal processing such as uh, speech coding speech recognition etc make use of special kind of digital signal processor they are just making use of the uh, digital uh, special kind of di uh, digital signal so that is what uh, the general purpose of this first and the microprocessor a microprocessor is a chill concept representing the central processing unit where all your uh, Uh, of instructions that we can take is capable of for performing arithmetic as well as the logical units or the logical operations according to a predefined set of instructions this microprocessor is the the heart of the uh, the system the system which is going to uh, execute or which is going to perform all the the functions capable of for it is capable of performing arithmetic as well as logical operations and in general the cpu contains arithmetic and logic unit control unit as well as the working register this basically contains what is called as arithmetic and logic unit control unit as well as the working register and the microprocessor is dependent unit and requires combination of other hard disk like the memory timer unit and interrupt controller for proper functioning the microprocessor is not in, uh, not alone right it depends on some other uh external devices or the hardware like the memory uh, timer unit and uh, interrupt controller to properly function uh properly correctly and intel amd freescale ibm ti cyrix hitachi we all are the key players in the the processor market we are already uh, like there are the many uh, uh processor uh, uh, developing companies uh, the developers uh, so few uh, to name few so intel and amd freescale these are all the on uh, the major players which are uh, into processor market in all uh, the microprocessor is uh, the heart of the embedded system for that reason any computing system and which is uh, able to perform uh, arithmetic as well as the logical operations and uh, it contains uh, arithmetic as well as the logic unit and the control unit as well as the working register as well apart from this the microprocessor is also dependent on a combination of other hardware like the memory timer unit as well as the interrupt controller and what is the difference between uh, the general purpose uh, processor as well as the application specific instruction set processor right so let us look at that the general purpose uh, processor that is a gpp a general purpose processor or a gpp is a processor designed for general uh, computational task it is basically used for uh, uh, general purpose computational task the processor running inside laptop or desktop is typical example of general purpose uh, processor it is basically uh, inside uh, running inside the laptop or desktop is a classical example of the general process uh, purpose processor due to the high volume production the per unit uh, cost of uh, for a chip is very low right because uh, it is produced in large numbers so per unit cost for a chip is very low a typical general purpose processor contains an arithmetic logic unit as well as the control unit right it basically contains two things that is a uh, alu as well as the control unit application uh, as far as the application specific instructions that processor is consider 
application specific construction set processor are processors with architecture and instruction set optimized to specific domain specific domain or application requirements they are they are customized for a specific domain or the application requirements or the net, like uh, network processing automotive telecom media applications digital signal processing and uh, control applications they are meant for uh, they are customized or they are uh, optimized for a particular domain or application requirement most of the embedded systems are built around application specific instructions and processors like they are these uh, embedded systems are built uh, for a particular applications right some microcontrollers like automatic ar usb avr or Atman, system on chips digital signal processor etc are example of uh, application specific instruction set processors right they are meant for a particular domain or an application right so let us take for if i develop an, an processor for one application or an one domain i cannot use the same processor or application for some other domain you cannot do that so okay so these uh, processors are developed for particular domain or the application requirement asrp incorporates a processor and uh, on chip peripherals demanded by the application requirement program and data memory it is it is developed by using the sorry uh, AS, asip incorporate a processor and an on chip peripherals right demanded by the application requirement program and the memory and let us look at what you mean by microcontrollers microcontrollers are nothing but is a highly integrated chip that contains a cpu scratch pad uh, ram special and general purpose register arrays and on chip rom or flash memory for program storage timer and interrupt control units right and dedicated input of course it is it basically contains a highly integrated chip that contains a cpu scratch pad ram special and general purpose register arrays on chip rom flash memory for program storage timer and interrupt controllers and dedicated input of course our microcontrollers uh, contains all the necessary functions or uh, functional box for independent working they contains all the necessary functional box for independent working have greater place in embedded in, uh, domain in place of microprocessor instead of microprocessor in uh, they are using the uh, microcontrollers in the embedded domain they are cheap cost effective and readily available in the market they are they are costly so they are cheap as well they are effective cost effective as well as they are available in, uh, in the market very readily right so and uh, these are the players at my at my texas instrument toshiba phillips Rescale. these are all the key players or the major players in the microcontroller market right so this is what the, the microcontroller and let us look at the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller a microprocessor is a silicon chip representing central processing unit uh, which is capable of performing arithmetic as well as logical operations according to a predefined set of instructions right a silicon chip a microprocessor is nothing but a silicon chip uh, representing a central processing unit that is a cpu which is by basically capable of performing all the ALU operations based on a predefined set of instructions whereas a microcontroller is a highly integrated chip that contains a cpu scratch pad down ram special and general purpose register arrays on chip rom or flash memory for program storage timer and interrupt controllers and dedicated input output post basically contains all these things cpu scratch pad and a special and general purpose register arrays on chip rom or flash memory for program storage timer and interrupt controls it is dependent it is a dependent unit. it requires the combination of other chips like the timers program and data memory chips and interrupt controllers etc for function so it it is not independent but it depends on some other uh, devices right like the timer memory and all other things but whereas a microcontroller is a self-contained unit and it doesn't require external interrupt controller timer or urt for its functioning right it is a self-contained right everything is embedded here so you don't need to connect this microcontroller to any other external devices right
and most of the time general purpose is in design and operation so most applications oriented or are specific to main it is a general purpose data for the microprocessor and the microcontrollers are developed for a particular domain or applications doesn't can built in, uh, contain a built-in input output ports input output port is not built into the microprocessor the input output functionality needs to be implemented with the help of external programmable peripheral interface chips like 8082 uh, 55 right these um, input output uh, operations or the power functionality has to be implemented separately but microcontroller most of the processors uh, contain multiple built-in input output ports which can be operated as a single 8 16 or 32 port or as individual port pins or right it contains all the input of microcontroller contains all the input output ports uh, in using these ports you can communicate with the other devices in, in targeted for uh, uh, high-end market where the performance is important right so it is basically uh, targeting the high-end uh, like for the, the market where the performance is very important the target for uh, embedded microcontroller target for embedded market where the performance is not so critical right so you are just uh, using the microcontrollers in any field where uh, the performance is not a critical issue and the limited power saving options compared to microcontrollers right the power saving options are uh, limited or uh, they are very less compared to the microcontrollers whereas microcontroller includes a lot of power saving features as well it basically has a lot of saving like a lot of uh, power saving options because almost all these things are uh, built in on on a handheld devices or a portable devices so so micro power option or saving option is big issue with respect to the, the microcontrollers and the next one is the digital signal processors digital signal processor or also called as a dsps are powerful uh, special purpose 816 or 32-bit microprocessor designed specifically to meet the computational demands and the power constraint of today's embedded audio video and communications applications it is it is uh, built for uh, right uh, special purpose uh, microprocessor 8 or 16 or 32 bit microprocessor uh, that is basically designed for to meet the computational demands and the power constraints of today's embedded video, audio, or communication applications. Digital signal processor are uh, two to three times faster than the general purpose microprocessor in processors. <laughs> right? They are much faster compared to the general purpose uh, microprocessor. Right? This is because the architecture the difference between the two. Right? The DSP's uh, architecture is different from the general purpose registers, as a general purpose microprocessor. That's why they are much faster compared to the, the general purpose registers, sorry, general purpose microprocessors. DSPs implement logic them in hardware which speeds up the execution, whereas general purpose processor implement the uh, algorithm in forming and the speed of execution depends the uh, the prop for the, the processor that is one more difference between DSPs and uh, general purpose uh, microprocessors is that all the algorithm is built into the hardware itself right then when you build the, all the algorithm into the hardware it will actually accelerates the execution that's why uh, they are much faster whereas the, for the general purpose uh, processors the all the algorithm has been implemented into the far format and uh, the execution of the execution of the firmware purely depends on the the speed of the or the clock clock of the clock uh, clock speed of the processors video audio video video signal processing telecommunication and multimedia applications are typical examples where dsp is employed right you are using uh, audio audio video signal processing telecommunication and multimedia application where a DSP is widely being used and digital signal processing employs a large amount of real-time calculations it basically contains large amount of real-time calculations to perform the uh, uh, to perform the, uh, a large time large amount of real-time calculation to perform it and some of the product calculation that is SOP convolution fast Fourier transfer and uh, discrete Fourier transfer etc are some of the operations performed by digital signal processor right these are the some of the operations that is performed by the 
digital signal processor that is some of the products that is sop uh, pos and convolution and uh, uh, first fourier transform discrete fourier transform and uh, large matrix multiplication and there is are some of the operations performed by the digital signal processors and the a typical signals processor incorporated the following units it has a program memory program memory for storing program required by dsp to process the data right all the the program has been uh, built into the the dsp itself right data memory working memory for storing temporary variables and data or signal to be processed right it is a working memory which contains uh, all uh, uh, memory which is basically used to store all the temporary variables computational energy engine uh, performs the signal processing in in accordance with the stored me program memory right it incorporates many specialized uh, arithmetic units and each of them operates simultaneously to increase the execution speed right it basically incorporates all specialized arithmetic units and each of them operates simultaneously to increase the execution speed as well it also incorporates multiple hardware shifters for shifting operands and thereby saves the execution time right it has also has the hardware shifters right so that you can ship the operands right and uh, thereby saves the execution time right instead of uh, relying on the main processor what you are doing is that dsp will have the multiple hardware shifters which are going to ship the operand values so that thereby they saves the execution time input output and unit acts as an interface between the outside part and the dsp it is responsible for capturing signals to be processed and delivering the processed signals it is basically used for capturing all the signals that has been processed and delivering the the processed signals as well right whatever the signals it has captured and those signals has to be uh, delivered right so to have that one you have the input output units so these are the basic components of the uh, the key comp units of the the dsp that is a program memory data memory computational engine as well as the input output unit and there are the, some difference between risk and uh, sys processor are the the controller uh, risk stands for uh, reduced instruction set computing all risk processor are controllers possesses less number of instruction typically in the range of 30 to 40 risk processor are basically contains uh, less number of instructions or very few instructions so that is in the range of the uh, what you call it as 30 to 40 instructions so art mainly your uh, microcontroller its instruction contains only 30 instructions in it right risk uh, microcontrollers are the the controllers contains a very limited number of instruction sets and using these instruction set you can execute the uh, or you can write the, the programs whereas uh, sys stands for complex instruction set computing and uh, this uh, contains a uh, very complex and instruction set uh, instructions are high in numbers right uh, it contains a large number of instructions right and also each instruction is com complex compared to the, the risk, risk instruction examples are 80 51 microcontroller its instruction set uh, contains 200 and 56 instruction look at the difference between the number of instruction in the risk as well as the risk in case of the risk it is in between 30 to 40 instructions but whereas for 8051 uh, microcontrol we have something some 255 instructions right that is what the the difference between risk and the sys processor or controllers and these are the difference between the uh, sys and the risk or microcontrollers are the microprocessors less the number of instruction whereas the greater number of instructions uh, for the risk it is only lesser number of instruction but sys it is greater number of instructions risk mm -hmm. instruction pipelining in, in increased uh, execution speed right we have the instruction pipelining that is encoded in the the risk microprocessor whereas a sys generally no instruction pipelining features so we don't have the pipelining feature in the the sys architectures right and um, uh, orthogonal instruction set uh, allows each instruction to operate on any register and use any 
addressing nodes. It is making use of orthogonal instruction set. That is, it is making use of any register and it is making use of any addressing mode as well. But whereas uh, for these registers, non orthogonal instruction set, right? It is non orthogonal instruction set. All instructions are not allowed to write on any register and use any address it is instruction specific right right you cannot use any register and uh, you cannot use any addressing mode it is very specific to instructions operations are performed on registers only the memory only operations are load and store instructions right so you cannot have a uh, memory to memory operations in case of the risk right all the operations are performed using only registers whereas for sys it is uh, operations are performed or on registers or memory depending upon the instructions right so there is memory to memory operations or the memory to register or register to memory and uh, register to register instruction you have in the this architecture or this is microprocessor a large number of registers are available in case of there is whereas limited number of general purpose register you can find it in the this is or this is microprocessor and the programmer needs to write more code to execute a task since the instructions are simpler one right uh, because uh, you have very few number of instructions to write a complete uh, program you need to write a uh, large instructions right of the simpler ones but in case of the sys instructions are like macro in C language a programmer can achieve the desired functionality with a single instruction which in turn provides the effect of using more simpler instructions in the risk right instead of writing uh, multiple uh, simpler instructions what you are doing is that you are writing a simple uh, uh, instruction this instruction that will achieve much uh, greater uh, functionality than the multiple risk instructions single fixed length instruction we have single fixed length instruction and uh, the length uh, instructions are variable in depth and uh, less silicon usage in the pin now count so we are using less in silicon here and the pin, uh, pin count is also it is also less and as far as the uh, CISC is considered more silicon usage uh, since more additional decoder uh, logic is required to implement the complex instruction decoding right we are using more uh, uh, silicons silicon diodes here because we need to decode all the complex instruction sets and with hardware architecture sorry uh, hardware architecture the architecture rs has been uh, developed using the hardware uh, hardware uh, architecture but uh, this can be in hardware or the non-human van human architecture like you are the normal system what you are using it so this is the, the difference between the non-human as well as the, the, the processor, the non-human as well as the hardware architecture, hardware, hardware uh, architecture, microprocessor and con uh, controllers based on the, on the hardware uh, architecture will have separate data bus on the instruction bit, right? Uh, there is a separate instruction on the bus for the data as well as the, there is a separate uh, bus for the instruction as this allows the data transfer and program switching to occur simultaneously on both buses because uh, there is a separate database as well as the instruction bus so you can perform both the uh, data uh, retrieving as well as instruction retrieving simultaneously the data memory can be read and write while the program memory is being accessed so we can read uh, data memory can be read and written while the program memory is being access right you can perform data memory operation like uh, read and write while the program is being accessed these separated memory um, and code memory bus allow one instruction to execute while the other instruction is being fetched right this this is going to that because we are having a separate database as well as the instruction bus this allows uh, uh, what you use that uh, you are you are executing one instruction at the same time you are fetching another instruction and that is called as a prefetching the prefetch theoretically allows much faster execution than the van neumann architecture right so so what you're doing is that you are just uh, executing much complex instructions here and this is the difference between uh, 
Harvard and the one human processors. Harvard architecture separate versus for instruction the data fetching. One human architecture single shared bus for instruction and the data fetching. We are having a single bus for both for the data as well as the instruction and easier to pipeline. So high performance can be achieved. You can achieve a larger, higher performance compared to uh, using the uh, uh, the pipelines low performance compared to hardware architecture one human architecture is lower in performance compared to hardware architecture and uh, comparatively right hardware architecture is comparatively high high, uh, high in cost whereas the one human architecture is cheaper because it almost all the computers you are making is of the one human architecture no memory alignment problems uh, you you can uh, um, memory alignment is uh, is not uh, is is a problem in the Harvard architecture, Harvard ar uh, architecture. But whereas one human allows self modifying codes, which can modify the alignments. Since data and memory and program memory are stored physically in uh, a different location, no chances for accidental corruption of program mm -hmm. memory. Right, where they are stored physically in uh, different locations, that is the data memory as well as the program memory. So there is no chances of accidental since the data memory and the program memory are stored physically in the same chip chances for accidental corruption for program memory there is a possibility of corruption of the memory because both of them there is a data as well as the program memory has been stored on the same chip so this is for the Harvard architecture we have the CPU program memory you have and we have the data memory both of them physically different in a different locations whereas for the one human architecture we have the input output so cpu and the memory and this memory contains both uh, data as well as the program right this is uh, the difference between harvard as well as the one one human processor and processor of the controller okay. uh, that is for the today's class we'll continue with the other topics in the next class. Have any questions? You have any questions? Yes. Do you have any questions? No, sir. No. Okay, we'll stop it here. Just wait, I'll take the attendance. Thank you.